Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to Tech Tested. Computer hardware tends to get the most attention in your computer with the latest and greatest processors and graphics cards coming out. But how big of an impact do peripherals actually have on your gaming experience? We intend to find out. So we can't really run any benchmarks to test this theory. So what we did was we brought in some friends and we set up two different computers that they're going to be playing games on against each other. First we're going to be using our AMD sleeper rig, albeit with a much less powerful R9 270 graphics card. And we're going to be pairing it up with some really good peripherals, very similar to the ones we're giving away in our 1000 sub giveaway. Then we'll be pitting it up against a much more powerful computer with an i5-4690K, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a GTX 980 Ti graphics card. with much lesser peripherals to see which you would prefer, sacrificing maybe some of your visuals for your gaming experience with the peripherals, or sacrifice your gaming peripheral experience for a much more visual experience. Now we chose three different games. They're gonna be playing Dota 2, mainly because it's a very competitive game that people may want to experience with better peripherals in order to get much more accuracy. We chose StarCraft II because it is a very CPU intensive game and may actually tax that FX processor to the point where people may prefer to have the i5 instead. And we also chose Battlefield 4 because it's gonna tax the graphics card a lot to a point where they may have to significantly turn down the graphics on that R9 270 in order to get playable frame rates. Now, the control component we have is the monitor. We are not using different resolution monitors, and this is the reason why. The monitor you have is going to dictate the kind of graphics cards you need. For example, you're not gonna buy a 4K monitor and run it with an R9 270 graphics card. Likewise, you're not gonna buy a 1080p monitor and run it with a GTX 980 Ti. For that reason, we have the same monitors on both. They're both running at 1080p, and they're running at 60 hertz, Obviously, this 980 Ti is going to blow everything away. You could even get away with this like kind of monitor with something as low as a GTX 970 or R9 390. We drastically pitted low hardware with good performing peripherals against a very good performing computer with, me with minimal peripherals for the sake of making this a very definitive decision. Now, this isn't to say you should definitely cripple your gaming computer for the sake of the absolute best peripherals are most expensive. We're trying to find out if you should allocate a relatively decent amount of your budget to substantially better peripherals in order to improve your overall experience. And with that, let's get started. Okay, so we have a couple friends playing. This is Tim, this is Joel. Tim is playing on the great computer with the lousy peripherals. And Joel is playing on the mediocre computer with the pretty good peripherals. And we're gonna find out from each of them how it actually affects their gameplay. It's like my pinky can't find a comfortable spot on this. It's like hanging off <laughs> or clinging on for dear life. And so what's your first impression? They work. Uh, the graphics are okay. The mouse is a little odd on my wrist, but that's fine. It's just a difference of uh, not having used it before. The one thing I have noticed about the mouse though is like when I'm trying to use one of these buttons because it's probably so worn or if it's an older mouse it just it's inconsistent I'll be spamming it or if the right click mouse is worn as well I spam it and I'm not getting the right clicks that I want I almost die twice because of it <laughs> <laughs> so so our players swap computers and they're gonna start perceiving how Dota plays in the different peripheral setups that we have for them and they're gonna be able to tell us how they actually prefer to play, high graphics, low peripherals, or high peripherals, low graphics. My first impression of this mouse was that it's a it's a bane to the human existence, but after I removed the mouse pad, it's actually not that bad. Uh, the keyboard's a basic, very basic keyboard. Uh, it seems to function as a keyboard. Other than that, I don't know yet. The mouse is wonderful compared to the other one. I actually don't own a mechanical keyboard, but this actually kind of changes my mind just because of how accurate it is, and it feels so much better than a regular keyboard. The graphics don't bother me at all. The fact that it's low, I thought I would be a little bit like, oh man, it's not as good looking or whatever, but it's not bad at all. Absolutely, just 
No, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't do this competitively. It sucks. <laughs> Okay guys, what did you think of each game? First, let's start with Dota. What were your thoughts on Dota? I know we covered this briefly, but what, what are your thoughts on Dota? Um, with Dota, I feel like the um, peripherals were really important. Um, honestly, I didn't care much about the graphics. I mean, it looked a little cheesy, um, blurry, but in the end, I would much rather have a, a good mouse and a good keyboard performance. Um, something that especially I'm working mic <laughs> that would have been very helpful especially communication um, misclicks are horrible in game like that they have huge consequences so honestly I much rather have better peripherals than uh, better graphics at that point I would agree uh, I think control is essential especially for Dota and uh, just about every single game we played the only exception to that being Battlefield I was able, able to do okay with the mouse that we're pretty sure is as a torture device, but um, yeah, the control is control is essential, and for that, the the nice peripherals definitely are important. So let's move on to StarCraft. Now, I we discussed this a little bit earlier too, but what was your feels on particularly your frame rate? Because your frame rate did drop a little bit uh, during large engagements um, with the AMD rig. Um, was that detrimental, or was it manageable to a point where you would prefer? Better peripherals. Have you ever tried to write your name with one of those giant pencils or markers, like the huge ones? No. Okay, well, it's if you try to use that microphone to write your name, that's what it felt like. You have absolutely no control. You know, it's it's like um, brushing your teeth with a with a hairbrush. There you go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sounds sounds quite enjoyable. Okay. With StarCraft, I feel like yeah, it's it's like a balance of peripherals or like seventy percent of the issue and then 30 percent is having a, a performance okay. um if you're you need to have the control and the response time and everything else in starcraft is very important but if also if you're lagging or you're spiking like that it can be just as bad as a bad mouse or even worse because okay. you're you're losing all these units and things are just happening and it's out of your controlling and you're that's it you lost so, I mean, sure, a few misclicks or just you, you're unable, you're button mashing because the keyboard's not exactly as precise as you'd like it, it'll screw you over. But if you have leg spikes or frame rate issues, it'll screw you over just as bad. And then Battlefield 4, uh, how did that feel with the uh, lousy peripheral? Um, it was even worse than I expected, actually. Um, Especially when you want to hear footsteps or a grenade or people moving around. You couldn't hear that with that headset that I had. Yeah. Um, it's oh, really? really important to have uh, good sound. Especially in a first-person shooter. Especially your first situational shooter. awareness is, is critical. Okay. And uh, I feel like it's 50-50 in that situation because I like to snipe, particularly in Battlefield, all the time. And when you see kind of a black thing moving-ish, you're not sure, and you have to zoom in all the time to make sure if it's a friendly or enemy unit. I'm sure, yeah, it gives it away with a little blue thing over their head, but whatever. If you see something that you're not sure what it is, you have to zoom in all the time on it. And it it can be a little bit of frustrating to um, figure out what you're shooting at. Okay. And you have to be more precise about it. And I, I play almost the exact opposite. I play medium to short range most of the time. And so for that, hearing people where they are and your situational where things are at is is just crucial. Now, with that, you need the control to be able to shoot the person, but if you can't hear them, if you can't hear them <laughs> you can flank a lot. Okay. What it sounds like to me is Dota peripherals, hands down, are definitely important, which I'm not really all that surprised at because it's not a very demanding game. Um, is that kind of a consensus with Dota? Correct. Correct. Yeah. S StarCraft um, visuals aren't all that necessary um, but you need a but, but frame frame rate was definitely important um, with the CPU uh, dipping down quite a bit yeah so there's there's a little bit more ne necessity of a balance but the control especially earlier we had a discussion you guys said the mouse was definitely important oh, yeah. with your gameplay with Starcraft oh yeah and then uh, battlefield 
Um, visuals were important. Like you said, you have to be able to see what you're shooting at. It's very important. But um, having the control of that, I'm surprised at both StarCraft and uh, Battlefield 4. You said Battlefield 4 not only was the precision with the mouse very important, but you said the audio was extremely important. Well, sure, because with, with like Dota or with, with uh, StarCraft, you're not really listening for where somebody is in relation to you. Okay. You, you, might, you might hear a certain skill go off, but it, you just know, oh, they used that skill. You don't know that person's right behind me or they're on the other side of that wall. And, you know, it, it's a different kind of a reaction that you need to make. Okay. And for Battlefield, it's the situation, situational awareness, situational awareness with, um, with where people are in relation to you is far more critical. So I haven't really told you guys what the cost difference in the parts would be, and I'm not sure you're very familiar with the hardware that we were using. Um, would you believe it if I told you the AMD rig was running a hundred dollar graphics card and the other rig was running it was running a six hundred and fifty dollar graphics card, but even only a three hundred dollar graphics card would give you the same performance. So you're talking about three times the graphics card cost. Um, I believe it. And the so so the graphics card the graphics was definitely that noticeable mm -hmm. to you guys that you'd think it'd be a three hundred dollar difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um the processor, um, we basically had we had the processor clocked at 3.5 gigahertz for the AMD side, which um, is essentially an AMD FX 8320, and we were running that up against an Intel i5 4690K, which is 3.5 gigahertz. Um, I think it turbos up to 3.9, um, and actually we had the turbo turned off on the AMD processor. But either way, you're talking about a difference. I'm, Thinking the AMD processor is around $140 and the Intel processor is around $230. So you're talking about an $80 difference. So between the two rigs, you're talking about, um, as far as perceivable difference, you're talking about $280 in difference. So having said that, $280 basically is about what the cost of those peripherals was. The peripherals we used for the NVIDIA Intel rig were essentially free. The, not free, but the mouse was three dollars. We found we found the keyboard here at the office. You, if you pay money for that keyboard, I'm sorry for you. And that headset, I think, was like ten dollars. So you're talking about thirteen dollars. The peripherals, I ten dollars for that. <laughs> back at, at some point, I'm sure I did. But Jeez. but no. But so in perspective to that, um, the peripherals. Would cost you in the neighborhood of two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars. I believe it. Yeah. Um, I mean, the headset is the Steel Series are really nice. They're mm -hmm. worth it, honestly. Like the sound quality. Dead nuts. You guys have a budget. You have to decide between these two computers: good peripherals with uh, lesser hardware, or better hardware with good peripherals, or with lousy peripherals. Which? What is your choice? Or would you make compromises somewhere? For a little bit better graphics and choose different peripherals if i had to really choose i would probably go with better graphics and a good pair of headphones honestly i the keyboard is not really that much of an issue in any of the games i played mm -hmm. i mean some of them it feels good to be precise that you don't have to fear about button mashing anytime but okay. honestly like I'll, I'll skip on paying for a crazy keyboard or a really nice keyboard you can get go for the headphones what about the mouse oh <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> um, the mouse. I would never use that mouse. <laughs> um, I definitely probably spent about sixty dollars on a mouse or something in that neighborhood. Okay, um, just to have something decent. You don't have to get like the like, crazy hundred twenty dollar mouse. I mean, it's just I feel like that's paying too much. I've always been pretty frugal when it comes to my buy. Okay, um, you can find decent Logitech mice. For that yeah, price. actually, for sixty dollars, that's what the. I'm um, pretty sure that's what we paid for the Logitech. So you're, you're saying, you're saying, you know what? Wait on the keyboard. The the mechanical keyboard was nice, but it's really not a game changer for you. Yeah, yeah. And the, the priority Jill. for me anytime I've built the system has always been mouse headsets, and then as much and you know the nicest specs I can get in the computer after that. Okay. Because your your headset and your mouse, you're as long as they're good quality. I've had uh, a mouse that's now infamous among our, our, our friends that's lasted probably close to 20 years now, and it, it still functions. Um, but that's that, that's just to say, if you have a good mouse, you can use it from computer to computer to, to computer, whereas if you buy a nice graphics card, 
you know, a year and a half down the road, you might want another one. Or okay. you reuse the same mouse if you spend the money on that. As long as it's, it's a good one, it can last you for a while. Okay. So what, what are your thoughts on the keyboard and the headset then? Headset is also a priority. Um, keyboard, not as much. You can go a little cheaper on that, but down the road, I'd still upgrade the keyboard. Okay. Nice. That's actually really nice to know because I, I didn't want to do the testing myself because I came in with a preconceived notion that... I would much rather go with a lesser uh, system and get the best uh, and get the best bang for m- buck on the mouse, the keyboard, and the headset. Um, mm-hmm. It's particularly for me the keyboard. Um, I use the same keyboard all the time. I very rarely use a different keyboard. So, as for from a gaming perspective, for me switching, especially in a game like StarCraft Two, where you use a lot of key- hotkeys on your um, keyboard, it would be very difficult for me to switch keyboards. And uh, you and I have oh, yeah. played to oh, where. Yeah. That was literally my crutch. Like, it, it was literally the, the tipping point between me winning a game and me losing a game. Oh, yeah. But you're saying that for somebody buying a new system, you think it'd be a much better idea to go with a, not necessarily a terrible keyboard, but you could go with a much lesser keyboard. Like, that keyboard costs... That's a $100 keyboard. So you can you can very easily find something around the $30 to $50 range. That okay. That suffice for, you know, a couple of years. And you know, if you're if you're on a budget, which could be the difference between an AMD uh, FX eight core series and fifty dollars, fifty dollars is easily the difference in even a processor that you're gonna pay. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a notable difference in cost. I'm I'm actually really glad we did this. I was really expecting you guys to be on board with me, you know, peripherals all the way, and that's not the case. No. <laughs> peripherals are important. The headset and the headset. I was the, thinking the headset would actually be the last on my list of things to worry about. Well, here's the thing with the headset. All the games, mm-hmm. with the exception of StarCraft, with all the games that we played, you're, they're team-oriented. Yeah. Battlefield, mm-hmm. you, you want to be, but it, you, know, it, you may it, not get as much of a team. Dota absolutely is very much of a communication. Yeah. And, um, and most games that people play right now are online team-oriented games. Yeah. The vast majority that people are playing on a competitive enthusiast level. Oh, absolutely. Well, wow, it's surprising to me... That kind of wraps up our conclusion. Um, as far as recommendations goes, these guys, um, both I, both people I would qualify as gamers. They spend a lot of time gaming. Apparently, go for the nice headset and my, mouse, but you might be able to skip out on the keyboard a little bit and maybe save up for a nicer one in the future, but definitely put that extra money that I personally would have put towards a keyboard into your computer hardware. And that could be the difference between um, uh, 30 frames per second and 100 frames per second in StarCraft, or it could step you up to being able to handle higher resolution or much better graphics settings on your graphics card. But I think that's our conclusion, right, guys? Yeah. So uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And as always, leave a comment if there's anything you'd like us to cover in the future. It's supported in most games now. There was a How do you feel about time. the fact that NVIDIA is able to gouge AMD a little bit by making developers not allow I think that's ideal terrible for the it's terrible for the end consumer. It's terrible it for is, you. But it is happening. But that's not good. That's not good for the market and that's not good for the consumer. It's great for NVIDIA as a company because they can corner the market. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the reason DirectX 12 got developed the way it did was because AMD came out with Mantle and their multi-core optimization. The reason high bandwidth memory exists is because AMD invested right. in it five years ago. AMD's investing in the consumer, they're investing in the technology. NVIDIA is holding you back because they want to hold hostage the market that they have. Excellent thoughts, excellent thoughts. <laughs> we'll have to see what's up next time. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching.